This video was produced by the UCD Math Support Centre in conjunction with the UCD Access Centre. In this video we're going to look at how to find the points of intersection between lines and circles. So our first example here says a plane is travelling along the line x plus y minus 5 equals 0 Ahead lies a large cloud of ash from a volcanic eruption that can be represented by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 17. And we're also told to note that each unit represents one kilometer, which will become important in the second part of the question. But first we're asked to find the coordinates of the points P and Q, these points here and here, of intersection between the line and the circle. The second part asks that if it is considered unsafe to travel more than four kilometers through such an ash cloud, should the plane alter its course? Okay, so to solve this question, first things first, I'm just going to write down the information we're given. We were told that the equation of our line was x plus y minus 5 equals 0. The equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 17. And this equation shows us that the center point of our circle is the point 0, 0 because this is what the equation with center 0, 0 looks like. So next, what we need to do is figure out how to solve for the points P and Q. The first step we're going to take to do this is to look at our equation of our line here. So x plus y minus 5 equals 0. So if both of these equations up here only involved x and y, then we could solve this with simultaneous equations like you saw in algebra. But the problem that we have is that in the second equation we don't have x and y, we have x squared and y squared. So in order to do this, we're going to have to do a substitution. So I've taken my equation x plus y minus 5 equals 0 and I want to try work out from this equation what x squared is equal to. So in order to do that first I need to get x on its own so if I subtract from both sides a y and add 5 Then on the left, they cancel and we're just left with x being equal to 5 minus y. But I don't want just x on its own, I want x squared. So I need to square both sides of this equals. When I do that, I'm going to get 5 minus y all to be squared. So I'm going to multiply out this right hand side here, so x squared, we can write this as 5 minus y times 5 minus y, and when we multiply this out, we have 5 times 5, 5 times minus y, minus y times 5, minus y times minus y, and when we do this out, we have 25 from the 5 times 5 we have minus 10y because we have minus 5y here and a minus 5y here giving us a minus 10y and we have plus a y squared from y times y. So now once we have this we have our x squared. So now what I'm going to do 
is take this value for our x squared and sub it in up here instead of this x squared, here. When I do that, I get 25 minus 10y plus y squared instead of our x squared plus our y squared equals our 17. So adding our y squares together, we get 2y squared minus 10y plus 25. And now if I subtract 17 from both sides just to get everything to one side of the equals, it cancels on the right leaving us with 0, but I get 25 minus 17, which is actually plus 8. And all of that equals 0. Now we can simplify this a little bit by dividing everything by 2, since all these are even numbers, and we get y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals 0. And now we have here what looks like a quadratic equation. So we solve quadratic equations by opening up our brackets, and it's all equal to 0. We can only have y and y here because we have a 1 in front of our y squared. Now we have the factors of 4 are 1 and 4, or 2 and 2. But we want to end up with a minus 5. And since in front of the 4 is a plus, we'll have to add but to get minus 5, both will have to be negative. So we have minus 4 and minus 1. We can just double check that. y times y is our y squared. y times minus 1 is minus y. And then we have another minus 4y, which gives us minus 5y. And minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. So this is correct here. So now, when we have two things that are multiplying and it equals 0, that means either the first bracket equals 0 or the second bracket is equal to 0. So that means we have y minus 4 equals 0 or y minus 1 equals 0. So we have y is equal to 4 or y is equal to 1. So now that we've found our two values for y coordinates for the points of intersection, we need to look at the equation of our line again to try and get the value for x in both cases. So if we have the equation of the line over here, if we rearrange it to get x on its own, we'll have x is equal to 5 minus y, so x equals 5 minus y, and we have two values over here and here for y, so we can get two values for x, so this value of y means x is equal to 5 minus 4, so x is equal to 1, so that gives us one of the points is the point 1, 4, our other point, y value, gives x is equal to 5 minus 1. Oops. 5 minus 1. So x is 4. So our other point is the point 4, 1. So our points of intersection then are the point 1, 4 and the point 4, 1. Now the second part of our question said that if the plane travels more than 4 kilometers through the ash cloud, then it must alter its course. So we'll recall that our picture looks something like this. We had our circle, we had our line. We now know the points P and Q, so this is say 1, 4. And this is 4, 1. 
then what we really need to find out is if this distance here inside the circle along that path is that greater than four kilometers. So that's the question we need to ask. So to get that to get the length of that line, we're going to have to get the distance from this point to this point. So we will recall that the distance from P to Q by our distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So filling in the values from our two points here and here, this is equal to the square root of 4 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus 4 squared, which is equal to the square root of 9 plus 9, which is equal to the square root of 18. And if you work that out in your calculator, that's approximately 4.2426. And we will remember at the start of the question we were told to note that each unit is one kilometer, so that's 4.2426 kilometers, which is bigger than four kilometers. Hence, the plane should alter its course. And that is the end of that question.